Welcome to the White Knuckle Podcast with your hosts, Jason Science and Dr. Clint McCoy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the White Knuckle Podcast. I have no idea what episode this is, and it, it really doesn't matter. Um, I have got on the other line, down in southern Illinois, the world-famous Dr. Clint McCoy. Clint, how's it going? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I understand that uh, you're sitting in an alfalfa field. Not far from it. Um, yeah, about sundown here. Uh, a couple three-year-olds out. One's in hard horn and one's not. Okay. Nice. It's I starting to be that wacky time of year. You guys are going here in a couple weeks, aren't you? Uh, a week from Saturday we go. Yeah. It's game time. Um, and then actually, actually joined uh, with me here in the studio, so to speak, is Mr. David Prochnow. Um, David and I have been doing this a long time together, um, this whole white knuckle thing. How's it going, Dave? Wonderful. It's a beautiful night on the back deck. We are. We're in the back deck in beautiful Endeavor, Wisconsin. Um, there's a nice breeze. It's 70 degrees, and we've got a fire going. It's quite quite romantic, isn't it, Dave? Burgers on the Traeger. Burgers on the Traeger. It's tra- over. It's been, yeah, it's we're over. living the dream yeah. tonight. And then um, our, our other guest... Um, uh, a guy that probably doesn't need a whole lot of uh, a lot of introduction, uh, Mr. John Eberhardt. John, how's it going? How's it going? Hi, it's going great. Jason, Clinton, Dave. By the way, uh, Clint, um, you're on stand. How are you talking so loud if you're hunting? Oh no no no! I'm I'm just glassing, man. We're oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get the law called on me. You're going to get DNR out here. <laughs> I am not everyone. I am not deer hunting in Illinois right now. We don't go. I will say right this. <laughs> you heard it here I, first. I will huh? say this: the Illinois DNR is very proactive because I went down there in 2008 and I shot a monster 12 point on public land in december right after the gun season ended and uh i in an article i wrote for bow hunter they misprinted the poundage of my bow at 35 pounds and the bow was actually at 45 pounds and i actually got a call from the illinois dnr when the article came out and they asked me about that (laughs) which shocked me that they would read an article and call me and obviously they checked because it's a 24 hour call and they checked where I shot it and everything. And, uh, if they called me and asked me if I was actually shooting a 35 pound bow, cause they're, I think your limit's 40. Yeah. Yeah. No, we're not hunting either tonight. So. Okay. <laughs> we got to keep it. We got to keep it PC for those proactive guys. Dude. Yeah. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, Hey, we, we, we got together probably, six or eight weeks ago, just the three of us, Clint, myself, and John, and we talked about, you know, a lot of hunting stuff, but, but primarily we talked about saddles and saddle hunting. And, um, at that point in time, John, you were, um, you were working on releasing a new saddle and I know that that's coming down the pipe. Um, but, uh, we also spent a lot of time just talking about beginners, uh, in, in, to saddle hunting and uh so tonight i've got barrett who's going to text me questions one of our team members that uh um uses a saddle um dave who's sitting to my left and then obviously clint and i would call all of us um newer saddle users i've been doing it for a couple years um i'm still learning um i'm actually going to be climbing in a saddle on wednesday night to film a bear hunt in northern wisconsin um, so I'm, I'm looking, looking forward to that. I love using it for filming. Uh, when I filmed last year, it was, it was great. So, um, that said, John, why don't we start out and have you tell us a little bit about what you've got going on, if that's okay with you, with your new saddle. And, and I believe you're partnering with tethered or tethered's helping you with that in some way, shape or form. Can you fill us in on that? And then we'll get to, we'll get to the questions that the, the guys and, and myself have, uh, have 
I guess figured we sure. wanted to ask um, later. Okay. Um, well, first off, I've got a. I started a new YouTube channel about five weeks ago called Eberhardt Outdoors. So uh, for all you guys that haven't looked at it, check it out. It's got going to have a lot of stuff about saddle hunting, and uh, may have a. Uh, the next episode, which will be posted tomorrow, will be an episode on the new Eberhardt Signature Saddle. Uh, the Eberhardt Signature Saddle is going to be sold through Tethered exclusively, so you can order them off my web. You cannot order them off my website. Uh, next year, we're going to have them in some stores, but this year it's strictly online. Uh, it's a two-panel saddle. It, uh, it's quite unique. It's not like any other saddle on the market. It actually has uh, slotted, angled, aluminum D rings for bridge loops so your bridge strap which is adjustable as you as you move the panels apart because the panels can separate they're two six inch panels and you can separate them to however deep you want the seat if you want it up into your lower back you know the inner panel always stays on right underneath the bottom of your butt but the other one you can adjust it to a seven inch saddle a seat an eight nine ten twelve 16, 18, you can put the outer panel up into your middle of your back if you want to go to sleep for a while. You can overlap them if you want to change your clothes. But no matter how you adjust the panel, the, the bridge actually will slide on those smooth aluminum D-rings to self-center your weight distribution. Um, it's a lot more comfortable because you have four two-inch straps supporting your butt as opposed to one strap at the top of a single panel saddle and one strap at the bottom. So those are two stress points. Whereas this one has four two inch straps. So you're distributing the weight more evenly in your butt section. You're not just having a stress point at the top of your waist and one underneath your thighs. Um, so it's a lot more comfortable. It's a lot more versatile. It self adjusts because most single panel, well, all other saddles, I don't know of any other saddle right now on the market. Uh, they all have bridge loops made out of fabric, and their bridges are either rope or strap. So as soon as you put your weight in the seat, the the fabric to fabric, the strap or the rope to the bridge fabric loop, it kind of binds in place. So you have to manually adjust that so that you're not always standing up and pulling the seat back under your butt. Uh, you have to manually adjust that until you get it in the right spot. And with mine, with the D-rings, it automatically goes into the right position. You don't have to do anything. So, And it, it has an adjustable bridge. Um, it, other than that, everything works the same. You can use the same, uh, you know, tree tethers or lineman rope. It's got lineman loops on it. It's got mollies all the way around the top. It's got the weight-bearing uh, belt. It passed all the TMA 300-pound uh, drop tests. Uh, and it carries liability insurance, which I think is very important if somebody's buying anything for climbing online. I don't care if it's haters, sticks, steps, saddles. Uh, you sh I would certainly want to make sure that the company has liability insurance before I purchase it because I'm a sales rep in the hunting industry. I can't sell anything into any store if that item is being used off the ground without it adding at least $2 million per incident liability. So, and it is being sold through, through tethered and it's going to be posted for sale. I think they said on September 18th is okay. when they will go on sale. John, real quick, just to clarify for, um, for everyone, you mentioned a, a 300 pound drop test. That's, that's something that as I understand it, based on the small amount of research that I've done, that's sort of a guideline that the TMA has set. Um, it, it seems to me, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not. that doesn't mean it's necessarily TMA approved because they really haven't um, gotten any hard and, hard and fast rules in terms of approving or disapproving of anything. But they, they can agree that the 300-pound drop test obviously has some, some um, validity to it. Merit. Yeah, some merit. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. They they will not. TMA is owned by tree stand manufacturers, so uh, for them to actually put their stamp of approval on anything, it has to have a five point six. So it has to have shoulder straps, leg straps, and obviously something around your bed, your your waist. So you got two legs, 
two shoulders, and your waist. That's five points. Uh, saddles don't have that. They've just got leg straps and they've got a waist strap, so they got three points of body contact. So, but still, there's a lot of saddles that are on the market that will not pass just the 300 pound drop test. They're working on having something for some sort of a saddle approval where they can actually approve it, but they haven't come to that yet. But uh, I, I do know there are saddles that have tried to pass the TMA 300 pound drop test. And they have not done it. There's three different drop tests. They put a 300 pound dummy in the actual saddle and they drop it six feet and it comes to an immediate sudden stop. And the saddle, the the mannequin has to stay in the saddle. So if you don't have that weight bearing belt on and to hold the mannequin in place, it'll slide out the bottom. So uh, it's still, you know, the the drop test is, is, in my opinion, what really counts. Because the shoulder straps on a saddle are not needed like they are for a tree stand hunter because you cannot fall out of the saddle. It's impossible to fall out of the saddle if you're hunting out of it correctly. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Anything else you want to add um, about the, the saddle that you've got coming? Sounds like on September the 18th it'll be available through Tethered, their site. Uh, yeah, it's going to be $200, so it's not going to be really expensive. No. It's, it's uh, not real expensive. It's going to be very reasonable, and and in my personal opinion, <laughs> obviously I'm biased. I don't think there's a better, better saddle out there. It's the most comfortable, most versatile, uh, most easily adjustable, most self-centering weight distribution saddle. John, John, it totally shocks me that you would have an opinion. Can you believe that? I, <laughs> <laughs> I've sat in a lot of saddles. I designed the, I helped Trophy Line design their ambush saddle, which was their mesh saddle, their lightweight. One. Sure. So, okay. Gotcha. I'm very familiar with most saddles. Well, let's let's get into um, talking about um, maybe what uh, what any of you guys have have noticed in using your saddle, whether it was you know this summer, Clint playing with it, Dave you know, whatever, um, comes up, but for right now, Barrett's got a couple questions. Um, and, uh, Barrett, Barrett asked, um, that, uh, let me just read this here. John talked on the last podcast about all the pros to saddle hunting. Um, and there are a lot of pros in my opinion. Um, what's the biggest obstacle, John, that you see in saddle hunting? And don't say nothing. <laughs> Getting out of bed. I, honestly, <laughs> don't have, I don't have anything. Getting out of bed and going hunting. <laughs> I I don't. I honestly don't see a, down, anything. Down. I mean, I, I hate to say that, but I, I can't. I've been hunting out of it for so long. And I, I just. I can't even fathom hunting out of a tree stand. <laughs> let, let, me, well, so let, let me, let me, John, let me ask. I mean, I, I, I that, that way, but I honestly don't, can't think of a negative. So, I would love somebody to try and throw one at me, though. Well, John, I don't have a negative. I'm just curious. So you've been doing this a long time, but for somebody like me that's going to jump in a saddle and head up a tree, what 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 do you think mm-hmm. I will encounter? You know, what do I got to be ready for? I mean, obviously, it's going to be foreign. What, what might be my biggest challenge? Well, there really is no challenge. If you can use, if you can climb up a tree and hang a hang on, you're climbing the tree in exactly the same manner with a saddle. You know, if you're using sticks or steps or you can use a ladder or whatever you want to use, you're using the same exact climbing method as you are if you're using a hang on. Mm-hmm. So once you get up at the top, uh, as opposed to putting a hang on stand there, what I do is I put a ring of steps. On public, it's strap-on, and then private, they're screw-ins. And then basically, you just stand on those steps, hook up your hook up your tree tether, which is your lead, and you're you're hooked to the tree while you're doing this. You're tethered to the tree from the moment you leave the ground until the moment you get back on the ground. But uh, once you get up there, you hook up your tree tether, and then you disattach your safety rope, and and you hunt. And then when you get ready to get back down, you reattach your safety rope and then you disattach your tree tether and climb back down, just like climbing out of a tree stand. 
most of the people that have fell out of tree stands and tens of thousands of people have fell out of tree hang-ons and uh, not necessarily climbers, but hang-ons and ladders. It's been when they've stepped into the stand or stepping out of the stand because typically once you're in the stand, most people nowadays hook up with their safety belt. But uh, even if they use some sort of a, a rope, you know, where they've got some sort of a tether hook to a rope, when they get it, they, they typically disconnect and then step into the stand and then hook up their safety belt. So that's your point where you're not safe with a hang on is getting in and getting out of the stand. Sure. Where with a saddle, you're never disattached from the tree. Makes so sense. It, other, other than that, uh, uh, the only difference is instead of hanging a platform, you're putting in a ring of steps, or you're putting in that little, you know, one of the small platforms that a lot of different companies offer right now. You, you just sort of, uh, so, sort of um, led into what one of Barrett's questions um, was, and. Went up, went up in the saddle, uh, you know, in the tree, um, and you're you're ready to get out. What what's the one thing that you have seen people do um, in terms of a mistake as far as getting out of the tree and and somehow you know messing up? Coming out of the you mean yeah. coming down from your hunting position? Yeah, getting getting out of yep the, yep. yep getting out of whether you're taking your platform off the tree um if you're using that or you're screwing steps is there anything that you've seen people make mistakes on over and over again that would you know say they don't like that that, that'd be a reason they don't like it like saddle hunting well not really the only thing that i could think of would be and i'm guilty of this um i'm not I, i typically don't use my safety belt um, you know, the safety belt there is supposed to be used, uh, but I typically climb up the tree, get on, you know, put in my steps and, uh, you know, stand up and hook up the tether. And then when I'm done, I just disconnect the tether and climb down the tree. So, um, but as long as you're using the safety belt, keep in mind, if you're running out of the tree stand, let's say you're freelance, you're just going in cold turkey. I shot my biggest buck ever out of the saddle, 180 inch or just going in cold turkey, setting up for an evening hunt. And if you're freelancing with a tr- with a hang on, you know you also have to carry some form of a climbing harness so that you can actually put your sticks on or your steps on while you're going up the tree. With a saddle, your saddle is actually also your safety climbing harness. So as long as you got your your lineman rope, which is also called your safety rope. You're tethered to the tree all the time. So you've got both hands free to put your steps in, hook up your platform, you know, put in the steps beyond around the tree if you're doing a ring or put steps on the back side of the platform or on the other side of the tree so you can maneuver 360 around the tree. You know, you're always tethered to the tree. And then once you get up, step up on your steps or your platform, you still got your safety belt hooked up. Then you hook up your tree tether. Then you disattach your safety belt. And then when you get down, you reattach your safety belt, disattach your tree tether, and climb back down and take the stuff out if you're on a freelance hunt. And you're still tethered to the tree. And you can use both hands for taking the stuff out, just like you use both hands for putting it in. Okay. With a tree stand, you've got to carry a cumbersome stand, plus you have to carry a, an extra climbing harness for a plot, you know, for putting up steps or sticks and having both hands free to do that. So you're not only carrying a seven plus pound stand, you're also having to carry some form of a climbing harness with a rope and pouches or whatever, you know, to to put on your climbing apparatus. Gotcha. What are, what are some, about the only thing, let me, let me throw one thing in there. So so this is kind of, I get this question quite a bit. Okay. Okay. Let's say, let's say you've got your safety belt on because, Tethered makes a, a safety belt, which they call their lineman rope, and they also make a tree tether. Now, they're both the exact same types of ropes. They're both half-inch diameter. They're both the same length. They both have carabiners on them. But the tree tether rope on one end has a really large loop because you're supposed to, once you get up on your ring or your platform, you take the loop and you reach around the tree and you grab it with your other hand. So you got the big loop on in your left hand now 
and it's in front of your face. And then you take the end of the tree tether rope and you put it through that big loop and you pull the carabiner and all the stuff back through and then you cinch it up to the tree. The lineman rope has a really small loop on it that you cannot put your carabiner and stuff through. So the lineman loop, it has a carabiner on it, which you hook to your lineman loop on your saddle. And then it goes around the tree and there's another carabiner that hooks to the lineman loop on the other side of your saddle. So my, so the question I get is if you're climbing up the tree and let's say you run into a branch and you have to bypass the branch, what you would typically have to do is you'd have to take out your tree tether, which is what's going to support you while you're hunting. And you'd have to attach it to your lineman loop and then put that over the branch, bring it around and hook it to your lineman loop on the other side. And then you'd have to disattach your lineman rope. Okay, so now you can continue up the tree. But you were still attached to the tree with your lineman rope while you were hooking up your tree tether rope over the branch, and you, now you're using that as your safety rope. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. yes you kind of understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I guess I would have honestly never thought of pulling out that second rope. I guess because I'm, I'm, I haven't hunted a ton out of a saddle, and I, I you know, when you're when you're putting up a tree stand, let's say you're doing a hanging hunt, you're probably not going to have two of those um, with you, which is why I wouldn't have thought of it. So that, that's a great tip. No, with a, you're right. With a hang on, you're probably going to have some sort of a climbing harness. And when you get to a branch going up the tree, if you're gonna, if you're not going to saw that branch off, which I public, you can't. Right. Then you got to disattach your safety rope and put it over top, and then dis- put it around the tree and hook it back up. Now that's a danger point. I, I know battle, this. You can actually <laughs> go ahead. I I know I, I know I know that well. David and I were setting up a stand um, in his uh, on his property, and I was on the fourth stick, Dave, or was it the third stick? Or at least the third stick. It was a ways, <laughs> and uh, um, I same situation. I unhooked my lineman's belt, hooked my elbow over top of that branch that I had to go over, um, and then unclipped, um, I think, after I hooked my elbow. And once I unclipped and, and hooked my elbow and was going to try and wrap it around, that branch broke. And David was beneath me, and he was able to get out of the way. But He missed uh, me. I came down that's, in a hurry. Yeah, that's a danger. That is a danger point. And with a regular, some sort of a safety climbing system, which you're hanging a hang on, you don't have the option of having a second rope. You only got one. Right. Well, so I with mean, the saddle, you can use your tree tether as a, as your safety rope to put over the branch and hook it up just like you did your original safety rope and then disattach the original safety rope and continue up the tree. Well, right. And, and I guess... You're, you're right, but if you want to be ultra safe and truly be, you know, t- tied to the tree, even if you are setting up a, a tree stand, um, a hang-on stand, you can just bring an extra lineman's belt. Um, most people don't do that, I would assume, but um, it's it, you bring up a great point, and, and uh, um, maybe nobody else has thought of that. I'm not sure. I hadn't, um, but it's something to something to think about if um, well, if if you truly And I'm going someplace else with it. Okay. Go yeah, I'm going someplace else with it. And so here's here's my suggestion to people, because you run into a little bit of a dilemma. If you have a lineman rope, okay, you got a lineman rope, you go up, you hit the branch, now you take out your tree tether, and you hook that up as your lineman rope going over the branch, and then you disattach your original lineman rope with a small loop on it. Okay, now you've got a problem where if you get up to your step,